Pathway family, thank you for tuning in. God has an amazing word for you, so go ahead and check out this message. And after, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. We love you. God bless. Man, it is so good to see everybody here in the house of God tonight. For the ones that I haven't met, my name is Pastor Robert. I'm the associate pastor of the way, and Pastor Marco is a senior pastor. Give it up for our senior pastor, Pastor Marco. Do a phenomenal job, and... Come on, we can do better than that. Give Pastor Mark a round of applause. He's a great pastor. And it's so good to see everybody here tonight. And, you know, as I, as I hear uh, Mike and some of the guys, Kubi and Miss Susie, Pastor Susie, go over what's happening this weekend. And me and Pastor Marco spoke a few days ago. And he's a pastor. He goes, Rob, I want you to speak on Wednesday. And I want you to talk about, you know, invitations and inviting people to the house of God. How many would realize that right now we're in the last days? We are seeing the last days before our eyes. And I want to spend the next 20 or 30 minutes talking about the power of an invitation. Write that down. Or if you're a note taker, you got your phones. The power of an invitation. By show of hands, how many in this room, somebody invited you to this church? That's 99.999100. How many are thankful for that person who invited you? Is the person that invited you, are they here today? Who invited you, Diamond? Who's here today? Who invited you? Your mama. Where's your mama at? Mama, what's up, mama? You invited your son. He's here tonight. Were you praying for him for a long time to get to church? Yes. Was he a knucklehead like me before he, kind of, no, okay, I was a knucklehead, I was crazy. How many else in this room, you're, the person who invited you, they're here tonight? Who, who, who invited you, Joey? Over here, Joey, who invited you? What's that? Pastor Marco invited you to go to church. How did you meet Pastor Marco? He came to pray for your brother at the hospital. Then he invited you, and now you come to the Wayward Outreach, and your family comes to the way. That's the power. That's the power of an invitation. How many else invited, somebody invited you in the house? Who invited you, sir? Who? Diamond invited you. <laughs> it was Diamond. So mama invited Diamond. Diamond gets saved and Diamond invited you. Yes, sir. And do you come to this church all by yourself? Who comes with you? My whole family. Pastor Robert, his son's on the camera right now. Wait, wait! <laughs> your son is on the camera. This is your boy. One here, one there. Look at your neighbor and tell them there's power in an invitation. In a moment, I'm going to bring a family up, and we're going to see a whole chain reaction of, again, what God is doing. Now, turn to Luke chapter 14 really fast. The power of an invitation. Look at Luke 14, starting at verse 16. It gives us a story that a master is having this massive banquet. It kind of reminds me that us, the way... We're having an amazing services coming up this weekend, the 22nd. We have an amazing feast that's about to take place in a few days. Now look at the story of what happens when you invite people. Look what happens. Luke 14, verse 16. If you got it, see, I got it, Pastor. I'm trying to see if you really got it. If you're just looking at the screen behind me. <laughs> you got it. You got it behind me. You got it in your lap. You got it. Luke 14, 16, Jesus replied with the story, a man prepared a great feast, and he sent out many invitations. How many got flyers on the way in? Wave to me if you got these flyers. Wave your flyers at me. A little bit later, we're going to pray for these flyers that God will anoint you to pass these out. If we find these in your car after Christmas... May the Lord deal with you. 
These are not just cool flyers to hang out in her car. When the banquet was ready, man, the banquet on Sunday is almost ready. Cajon High School is getting geared up to be here with us. Got a real-life zebra going to be in the house. Not like the Tijuana zebra we've seen over there in Tijuana. Do you remember that? You guys, you guys reminded me on Sunday. We went, to, we went to Tijuana about a month ago, and they get um, donkeys in TJ, and they paint them black and white. You remember that? And then you get, you get, you get a picture with the fake, the fake zebra. We're not going to have a fake zebra here. It won't be spray painted. Man, the feast is about to take place. How many remember before somebody invited you to church how of a wreck you were before Jesus Christ? How many are thankful that somebody invited you to the house of the Lord? Come on, give Jesus a shout of praise. He's good. He's good. He's good. I tell you, he's good. He'll set you free from drugs in five seconds. Man, he's good, isn't he? When the banquet was ready, he sent his servants to tell the guests, all right, come to the banquet, it's ready. But they all began making excuses. One said, I have just bought a field and I got to inspect it. I bought some land, I got to go check it out. Please excuse me. Another said, I've just bought five pairs of oxen. I want to try them out. Please excuse me. Another said, I, have a, I just got married, now I have a wife. I can't make it to your banquet. Verse 21, the servant returned and told his master what they had said. His master was furious and said, go quickly into the streets. Go quickly into the streets and alleys of the town. Invite the poor. Invite the crippled. Invite the blind. Invite the lame. After the servant, servant had done this, he reported there's still room for more. So his master will go on to the country lanes behind the edges and urge anyone to... Find the come. So the house will be full. It is our responsibility to fill the house of God. Look at your neighbor and tell him it's your responsibility. Now you gotta give it, you gotta give it some energy. You gotta say, look, it's your responsibility. Put a little oomph behind it. Say it's your responsibility to fill the house of God. Right now, Christmas is upon us. How many are getting invitations for parties? Anybody get invitations? Parties and hangouts and get-togethers. Here are the two greatest invitations we can give somebody. Write this down. Here's the two greatest invitations. Number one, an invitation to come to church. It's one of the greatest invitations you can give somebody. Hey, would you come to church with me? Here's the second most important invitation we could give. An invitation to receive Jesus as our Lord and Savior. Now let me ask you a question. If we invite people, will they come? Are you sure? You're positive. All right, let me give you a stat then. Here, here's a true stat. 82% of the unchurched are likely to attend church if a friend, co-worker, neighbor, or family member invites them what's the percentage now let's just round it off because my math is bad round it off to 80 let's break that down that means eight out of ten friends co-workers neighbors they will come if i just invite them i sold cars for a living i wish we had an 80 percent ratio pastor marco I wish I had an 80% ratio when I was in car sales. That if I talked to 8 out of 10, they'll buy a car. It was a lot less than that. Plus, I wasn't the best salesman. But, man, I love this stat. 8 out of 10 family friends, if I just invite them, they'll show up to church. And I look around. We got a few empty seats in the house. Everybody look around in the back a little bit. We got a few empty ones. I got a, we got the section over there. Pretty soon, pretty soon, I'm going to declare it right now because 2020, we're declaring it as growth. Pretty soon, every service at the way will be full 100%. I'm going to say it again, about 70% were clapping. 
I believe in 2020. Hold on, I got to finish. I believe in 2020. By the time 2020 is done, in the middle of 2020, I am declaring right now that every service at the way and our Airway campus will be full to capacity with overflow. Give Jesus a shout of praise if you believe it. How is that going to happen? Now, this works. This, this, this works. This works. Lord, bring people to the house of God. Jesus, I fast and I pray, bring people to the house of the Lord. Now, that works. How many know prayer works? But it can't stop there. Jesus is touching, or the Holy Spirit, rather, is touching people's hearts. Holy Spirit is touching people at your job right now, and all they're waiting is for an invitation. The Holy Spirit is moving around your neighborhood right now. The Holy Spirit is hovering. If you look at the book of Genesis, chapter 1, the Holy Spirit hovers around something before he begins to move. But the Holy Spirit needs our participation in order to see the full effect on what he's trying to do. And all the Holy Spirit is asking us, just invite them. I want you to write this down. We really only have two major responsibilities to fill. There are only really two responsibilities that we are supposed to fill. Number one. Our responsibility is to fill the church. What's one of our responsibilities? What's one of our responsibilities? To fill the church. Number two, responsibility to fill. Our responsibility is to fill heaven. I want to fill heaven with as many souls as I can. I want to bring as many people as I can to heaven as, until the day I die, till my last breath. I want to reach souls for Jesus. Pastor Marco said it right. He said, hey, man, when I'm dying, I just want to lead somebody to Christ when I'm dying. Breathe in for your last breath. Do you know Jesus? I love it when Pastor Marco did that. I pray that's my heart till the day I die. I want to stay hungry for souls. I want to stay hungry for people. Now, this scripture tells us that the servant went out. He invited all kinds of people. Few people came, but the house was still empty. Then the scripture describes three or four groups of people that if you invite them, they'll almost come almost 100%. Number one, write this down. Invite. Who do we invite? Invite the poor. That's why Sunday at 1 o'clock, we're inviting the poor to come get presents, people that are struggling. And at 1 o'clock service, this service is going to be packed of people that are right now struggling maybe in their finances. That word poor not only means someone stricken with poverty. That word poor means someone who lacks spiritual insight. It means they're poor in spirit. They don't know much about God or know anything about God. They're poor in spirit. They're lacking something in their lives. Invite the poor and they will come to church. We see in the scripture it says the crippled. Invite the poor. Invite the crippled. What does the word crippled mean? Someone who's physically sick. Someone who's emotionally sick. Someone who has pain. Someone going through suffering. Someone who has been crippled with their past. They're crippled with their fear. Crippled because of a drug addiction. There are so many hurting people in the world. How many know at least five people that are hurting right now in this world? All of us do. How do I know the world is hurting? Let's go further. Let me give you a few stats of hurting people in America right now. Right now across the world, across America, there is one suicide every 40 seconds. There's hurting people all around us. There's more than 300 million people worldwide who suffer from depression. And maybe you're in this room right now. Maybe you're watching us live on the internet. 
and you said, I'm depressed, I'm suicidal, I have good news. By the time this service is over, you're going to get an opportunity to give your cares to Jesus. And the Bible says he loves us, he cares for us. You can be set free today. How do I know the world is hurting? More than 2 million people, especially teenagers and young adults, they cut themselves, over 2 million. Anxiety disorders are the most common mental illness in the United States, affecting 40 million adults in the U.S. alone. More than 200 million people suffer from alcoholism. They're hurting. They're crippled. I remember, let me tell you a personal story of mine. To me, the most impactful invitation that I've ever made it was about 13 years ago. Our church didn't have a men's home. We didn't have any women's home. We didn't have none of that. So I met this girl by the name of Erica. She was a manager of a transitional home here in San Bernardino. She would help us get people off the streets. She would help us, people that needed a, a transition or in the middle of a job or they were struggling. So I met Erica. She, she was a manager of a home called The Burning Bush. If you guys know the Bible, Moses, the burning bush. And every time I would see Erica, I would invite her to go to church. I said, Erica, we got a great feast happening at the church. We got a great, we got a great church. I want you to come join us. I know you got some kids. Our, our kids' world, man, is like Disneyland slash church. They'll have a blast and they'll learn about God. I mean, I tried everything. How many in this room have invited people and you've, it tried almost everything. By the time this story is over, I'm going to tell you right now, don't give up on that person. Don't give up. Somebody didn't go give up on me. Somebody didn't give up on you. Well, I asked Erica, Erica, come to church. I asked her again. And she said, Robert, quit bugging me. I'm not going to church with you. You're starting to offend me. I'm tired of it. I don't want to go to church. I said, okay, Eric, I won't, I, won't, I won't invite you anymore. Then we were coming up to Christmas time just like this. Never forget this. And I got a call on a Sunday morning. And I, I seen the number. I said, oh, the burning bush. That's Erica. She wants to go to church. And I answered, hey, what's up? And there was a guy answered the phone. I said, who are you? He goes, well, I live at the burning bush, and the transitional home where Erica runs. And she gave me her number, and I want to know, can you pick me up to go to church? This was a Sunday morning, early in the morning. I said, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll go pick you up. So I go pick up this guy, and the transitional home was on the corner of 13th and G Street. Anybody know where that's at? 13th and G, never forget it. I pull up my car. The guy comes out, hops in the car. Erica is at the front door with blue sweats and a white tank top. The guy hopped in the back seat, got to meet him. I began to pull off. Then God told me, the Holy Spirit told me, ask Erica, invite her one more time. I said, no, Holy Spirit, I can't. She told me, no, that's not a, that's not a good idea. I don't feel like getting yelled at at 8 o'clock in the morning. So I put, my gar I put my car in drive. I took off. The Holy Spirit said, pull this car around. I'm touching her heart. Ask her one more time. Today is her day. I said, okay, Holy Spirit, you got to do a miracle. Okay, let's flip the car around. Erica was going in, and I began to walk. And I remember it was just like this. We were giving away Christmas presents on a Sunday. And it hit me before. I said, I got to come up with some ammunition. I got to come up. I got to do something. I said, okay, we got Christmas gifts. I said, Erica. She goes, ah, what, what do you want? I said, Erica, our church has given away Christmas presents. I know you have a couple kids. I know you're hurting. I know you're kind of struggling right now. I know you're dealing with some pain. Would you come to church with me? And I, I got hookups. My, I, I know the senior pastor. I could give you even more gifts. <laughs> I was just trying anything. 
She goes, well, I'm not ready. I said, well, go get dressed. We don't care how you, we don't care how you dress at the way. Just if you want it, she said, let me brush my teeth. Let me get ready. So she did. She went and put on some pants and a shirt. She came out and her kids came. And Erica came to church after, after, I don't know, maybe a couple years of inviting her. We're in the front row. We're at our old building, 4th and Arrowhead. I'm in the front, kind of like I sit now. Erica's sitting behind me. Pastor Marco's preaching that day. He does the altar call. And um, I said, please, Lord, you said this is her day. Let her get saved. This is her day. And you know how we do it sometimes? We ask people to raise their hands on the count of three if you want Christ. And sure enough, Pastor Marco did that. One, two, three. Raise your hand if you want Christ. And you got that picture of Erica? <laughs> Faustino just sent me this picture about a month ago. He's going through the archives of his picture. He goes, I think you'd enjoy this picture about Erica. Man, I said, I said, I sure do, Faustino. She gets saved, gives her life to God. She gets her presents, 48 hours pass, Christmas Eve. I'm at Honey Baked Ham on 2nd Street. I get a call. And I said, hello, how you doing? And he said, well, this is Detective so-and-so. I said, man, for a detective calling me on Christmas Eve, I might be in trouble. I said, detective, what do you want? How could I help you? He goes, do you know Erica Munoz? I said, yeah, of course. The manager of Bernie Bush, what's up? How can I help you? He said, well, this morning at 2 a.m., she got murdered. Her boyfriend stabbed her to death. And just like you, my heart sunk. Couldn't believe what I just heard. I said, Erica Munoz? She goes, yeah. Hung up the phone and called Pastor Marco crying. I said, guess who died? He goes, who? I said, Erica, the girl that I brought to church on Sunday. And we're both sad. And I think it was Pastor Mark who said, man, this is, this is a tough one. He said, but wait a minute. She gave her life to Jesus. She got saved. She's in heaven right now. And you're, we're going to see her again. All of us are going to meet Eric again if you got Jesus. And from that day on, I began to tell myself, and God is still working with me every day, to make sure that invitations go out to, in as, to as many people as we can. Who do we invite? We invite the poor. We invite the crippled. We invite the blind. Let me, let me, let me jot this down. I'm going to bring the family up here in a minute. Write this down. What happens if we don't invite what happens if we don't make the invitation? Imagine if I didn't ask Erica that one more time. She had a 48-hour window of her life left. Imagine if I didn't ask her. What happens if we don't invite those that God is telling us to invite? Write this down. God will hold us responsible for their destruction. God will hold us responsible for their destruction, for the people that God is telling us, warn them, invite them, tell them about me. So, Pastor, how do you know we'll be held accountable? Ezekiel chapter 3, verse 16. After seven days, the Lord gave me a message. Ezekiel 3, 16. After seven days, the Lord gave me a message. He said, Son of man, I've appointed you as a watchman for Israel. Look at your neighbor and tell them, you're the watchman. What are we the watchman over? Our family, our friends, our city, our community, your job site. We are the watchmen of San Bernardino. We are the watchmen of our family. We are the watchmen of our friends. We are the watchmen of our coworkers. I've appointed you as a watchman. Whenever you receive a message from me, warn people immediately. How fast should we do it? When you get in your car at the end of the service, I double dog dare you, text three people that need to get to church on Sunday. How many are down for that, that little double dog dare? How many could text three people by the time you get to your car today? 
I should have took a picture of everybody to see. You get a message, warn them fast. Why? 48-hour window maybe. Maybe that's today where the Bible says, man, the heart gets so hard and begins to turn to callous. We got that last opportunity to reach them. If I warn the wicked, saying you are under the penalty of death, but if you fail to deliver the warning, they will die in their sins. And here it goes, underline this. And I will hold you responsible for their deaths. Man, if that doesn't hit you, I don't know what will. I'll hold you responsible for their death, for their destruction, for their... If you warn them and they refuse to repent, keep on sinning, they will die in their sins. But you will have saved yourself because you obeyed me. A watchman is a person who keeps watch or guard to observe with the purpose to keep safe from upcoming harm. We're the watchmen of our city. Right now, my daughter goes to Cajon High School. I just became a watchman for Cajon High School. So I show up the other day to go drop off something for my daughter, and a guy and a, a, guy and a girl, two students, are kissing off to my left. If that was my daughter kissing that guy, there'd be problems, right? Because my daughter can't date until she's in college or until she's like 35. No. <laughs> Oh, you got me? Yeah, right, 35. You're 35 club? 35 club, no. 40, you say 40. So I go on the campus, and I, and I ignored it. And God says, the Holy Spirit, what are you doing? You're the watchman of this, of, the, of, this, of this high school. I see, I'm a watchman. God, what do you want me to do? He goes, break up that kissing. So they're about 20, about 10 yards out. I walk about five yards. I say, hey! And they said, what? I said, no kissing on Cajon campus. <laughs> Who are you? I said, I'm one of the pastors at the Way World Outreach. And we don't believe in dating until you get to college. So cut it out. And they looked at me like I was the stupidest person alive. I don't care how they look at me. I just saved someone's daughter from getting pregnant. Because why? I'm a watchman everywhere that I go. Maribel, come up. Let's see, another let's, let's see another chain reaction of the invite. Maribel, you come up first. Give it up for Maribel. Let's look at another chain reaction. Maribel, how long have you been saved? Um, since 2012. Since 2012. Has Jesus just changed your life dramatically? Completely. Completely. Now, you were dating this guy in the front for a little bit back in the days, right? Yes. His name is Chris Morgan. One of our leaders, he graduated Leadership University. He holds multiple Bible studies throughout the week. He's, he's, he's an amazing guy. You were dating, and he wasn't saved. No. Did you want him to get saved when you guys were dating? I did. You did? Yes. Did you start to invite him to go to church? I did. Yeah, you were coming to the way already? Where were you going? I was coming to the way at the old campus. You were coming zero. to the way. On so you guys were dating. Uh -huh. he, was he crazy? Yes. We're not going to get into details. We won't get yes. into details. <laughs> he was crazy. Did he like drugs? Everything that was bad for him, he liked. Oh. Not too many details now. No. Not too many details. <laughs> so he liked everything. So you finally invited him to come to the way, mm -hmm. invited him to come to God, and he came? Yes. And what happened? He gave his life to Jesus? He did. He gave his life to Jesus, and it was like magic to me in my eyes because yeah. it happened fast. It was like magic. It was. He gets saved, and then you guys start going through premarital counseling with yes. Mondo, I think, and Christy. And Christy, yes. They're awesome, aren't they? Yes. And then you guys, so she came to church first. They're dating. 
Chris, I want you to come up. Give it up for Chris Morgan in the house. Mighty Bell, if you can stand a little closer. Mighty Bell, if you can stand here. Chris, you can stand. Yeah, let's do the chain reaction. Chris, you can stand over here. So she invited you to church. What did you think or what were you saying when she invited you to go to church? You were like, yeah, let's go to church. That sounds like a good idea. N no. no. <laughs> um, it was actually a, a kind of, I was like, go, go. It's good for you. Keep going. Um, it's good for her. Yeah. And then... Uh, I don't know. God has everything set up and prepared. Um, we, wow. ju we just need to answer the call. So when I accepted it, I think Pastor Marco was preaching. I was in the tent. Pastor Marco was preaching on a man's role in the house. Oh. And we had just had a son together, and I was all bad. So I accepted the invitation to go up and uh, gave my life to, to God. Wow. So she gets saved. She invites you to church, and we could have went through a whole chain. He's got like two or three chains that he started here at the way already. Who did you invite next to come to church? Oh, uh, well, I don't know if they got the picture, but it was uh, Francisco. There's Francisco Gonzalez. right there in the middle. Uh, yeah, with the Bible. And uh, How did you know Francisco? From the streets. From the streets. Yeah. So you invited Francisco. Yes. And what happened to Francisco when he came to the house? He... He went to the church, he, yeah. Went to get baptized. He got, gave his life to God, got baptized on the same day, and uh, just completely changed his life. I met Francisco at our discipleship classes. Mm -hmm. He told me when he came to the church, he wanted to fight a couple people that was in the church. Pastor Todd, actually. Oh, he wanted to fight <laughs> Pastor Todd. Sorry, Pastor Todd. Just before getting baptized. He told me before he got saved, he was full of rage and full of anger. Yes. So right before he's about to get dunked in a tank, he wants to beat up one of the discipleship pastors. But how many know Jesus is good and he transforms lives? I ran into Francisco a while back. I said, Francisco, you still want to fight people? He goes, not even close. He goes, I got so much love. All I want to do is hug people all day long. So you get saved. You invite him. You guys get married. You got this beautiful marriage. You invite Francisco. Who does Francisco invite? Just before that, we also got my nephew. We invited my nephew. Who's come on up. Come home. on up. Just, just, I want to see the chain reaction. Just come on up, nephew. Come on up. So he, he comes and he gets saved. Yes. <laughs> That's okay. You can stand there. There you go. And then Francisco starts to invite, and we, he invites Jason. He invites Jason. Jason, come on up. This is insane, isn't it? So you invite Jason. And then Jay, or you invite Jason, he invites Jason, and now Jason comes to church. And where were you before God? At home. At home. Yeah. That's a good answer. You can see some of the empty seats. There's a lot of people there at home right now. What are they doing at home? What kind of stuff were you involved with before you met Jesus? Uh, drinking. Drinking. How do you know? How do you know him? How do you know Jason? He met him. He brought him. So now you get saved. Yes. Have you been through our discipleship classes here? Yes. And you finished all the discipleship classes? Started in purpose and uh, freedom. Wow. And now you're in love with Jesus. Yes. Are you in love with Jesus? Yes, I am. So you get saved. He gets saved. He gets saved. He gets saved. Invites you. Know, who do you invite? Do you invite some people? Who my, do you invite? My wife, Veronica, my son, Jeremiah, and my, one of my best friends, Alex Ramirez. Come on up! See, so you invite your wife, and your wife comes. Yes. Then my son. And then you invite your son. And then my best friend. And now your son gave his life to Jesus. Yes. Yes! And then you invite your friend. Who's your, what, what's the name of your friend? Alex. Alex. You invite Alex. Where, did, where do you know Alex from? Where do you guys know each other from? From the neighborhood. From the neighborhood. When did he invite you? Were you guys hanging out somewhere? Where did yeah, he invite you well, to go to we're, church? We are trying to get swole. We're trying to get out. swole. Yeah. In other words, you're working out in the gym trying to get yeah. swole. Well, we're in the garage. In the garage, okay. I was thinking gym. So you're trying to get swole in the garage. <laughs> and you give him an invitation to come to church or come... Oh, yeah, to well, come he, back he to church. Like, what was your story a little bit? He was like, um, I went to church, and I was like, what? Like, 
He told you he yeah. goes to church. Yeah, you exactly. were like, he what? Went, Francisco invited him, and I was like, what church, bro? Because I've been there. You know, I've been to the way. Like, I used to go there. Like, you're like, no way, because I've been needing to go back. You know. <laughs> So when you were getting swole, swollen in the garage, yes, you used to go to this church, yes, and then you left, yes, I straight away. You backslid. I backslid. You left Jesus for a little bit. Kind I didn't, of. I oh, never not Jesus, lost my you know. faith, but I. Okay, there I you go. Yeah, that's good. Okay, that's good. World. When I said Jesus, he was like, "Wait, I didn't lose Jesus. Hold on now." <laughs> yeah. I just said I left church. I left the way. Yeah. <laughs> So he invites you to come back to church. Yes. And how long have you been back to church now? It's a year. Yeah. Is that the end of the chain? I need you had some more. No, oh, you got uh, another one? No, Who well, else? well, all my kids are, all of our kids are back there, but I also invited, yeah. Kids, stand up. If you're right, a child, right, stand up. up. Son, daughter, stand, stand up. up. Everybody, stand up. Those are your stand kids. Up. Stand up, Jazz. That's, that's his daughter, too. So them. they gave their life to Jesus. Yes. And, and it started with you inviting him. And now you got like half the church here is because of you. Hold on, we forgot one. Oh, you gotta uh, keep on going. I have going. a friend here too that I've known for like. You brought a friend. Since elementary. Yeah. Since elementary school. Yeah, that I know. And you invited her to the way? Uh, yes. Come up really fast. We'll just give you a high five. I just give you. What's her name? Uh, Veronica. Her name is Veronica. We got two Veronicas. So that's an old friend from elementary school. Yeah. She comes to the church and she gives her life to Jesus. Yes. How long have you been saved, Veronica? Two weeks. <laughs> no, you can do better than that. Come on, give Jesus a big shot. Come on. <laughs> because of one invite, and this is not even, got a whole bunch. We can start like five rows with Chris and his wife and the whole group here. Chris still holds a Bible study. He has Power of 12. He has C. He has like a, all kinds of Bible studies. <laughs> and Chris told me before we got up here, he go in the backstage, he goes, Pastor Mark, I told Pastor Marco, can I keep this Bible study? I said, what was cool about this Bible study? He goes, this is an outreach Bible study that we invite people into this Bible study so we could get them saved. And that's just one group. Can you give all of these a round of applause? You guys can be seated. Thank you guys so much. This is amazing. All because of one invite. Maldo, here's a mic. Here you go. Uno, dos, tres. There you go. Can you guys see the power of an invitation? Just write these two things down because of time. What happens if we don't invite? God will hold us responsible. Number two, we will experience personal emptiness. The Bible says in John 4, 34, Jesus explained, my nourishment comes from doing the will of God. What's our number one purpose? Inviting people and saving people. That's it. You will feel empty if you're not winning souls for Jesus. You will be an empty Christian if you don't invite anyone. And emptiness will come. And number three. If we don't invite people, our family, and friends, imagine, Maribel, if you didn't start this whole, this whole chain reaction. Our family and friends will go to hell for eternity. Your boyfriend was on his way to hell before you invited him. Revelations 20, 15, and anyone whose name was not found recorded in the book of life was thrown into the lake of fire. We don't make an invitation. Our friends and family are going to a place called hell. It's a real place of destruction, of separation from God forever, place of torment and pain. If you got these 15 flyers, can you just hold them for a second? We're going to pray for these. The power of an invitation. Just kind of hold them for a second. I want you to place your hands on them. We're going to pray that God will anoint these flowers and will anoint you the next few days. I pray that 9 a.m. is filled to capacity. We're praying, but then we're going further as well. We're going to invite people. 9, 11, and 1, all kinds of great things happening. 
And the most important thing on the 22nd, Pastor Marco is going to explain the life of Jesus. Why did he come? Why did Jesus come? And when your friends and family come on Sunday, they're going to have, they're going to enjoy a camel ride outside. They're going to enjoy the zebra. They're going to have an amazing time in the foyer. Enjoy Cajon High School. That's going to be amazing. And then at the very end, your friends and family are going to come to the front, just like Erica did, and give their lives to Jesus and start another chain reaction. Father, we lift up these flyers to you. Father, anoint these flyers. Anoint our lips as we begin to invite people. Anoint our phones as we're texting and calling people. Father, we thank you. Now we're going to do our part to invite as many people as we can to the big banquet we have on Sunday. The big service. And what greater gift can we bring you, Jesus, for your birthday than a soul? The greatest gift we can bring you, God, on your birthday, Jesus, is a soul. So, Father, we lay hands on these flyers. Begin to anoint them. Give us to the right people at work and our neighbors. Just send us people all week long. He say, hey, I want to bring you to church this Sunday. Will you come with me? I want to invite you. Lord, we thank you. I pray for boldness right now. I pray for boldness. I pray for the spirit of evangelism, one of the gifts of evangelism right now in the name of Jesus to evangelize to our friends, to our family, to our co-workers. Lord, 80% will come. Our close friends and co-workers, they'll come if we just invite them. Lord, we thank you. Anoint these flyers in the name of Jesus. Anoint what we're going to do the next few weeks. For the next few days, we thank you in Jesus' name. Thank you so much for tuning in to today's message. We pray that you were encouraged and empowered. Don't forget to check out some other messages we have on our YouTube channel. And share, subscribe to thewayworldoutreach.org. We love you. God bless you. Have an amazing week.